Sonia Leonardo, you may do the cloud recording. Cloud is going. All right, Sergeant Polite, it's all yours. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the remote hearing on landmarks, public sightings, and dispositions. Will all members and staff please turn on their videos at this time? Again, will all members and staff please turn on their videos at this time? Thank you. To minimize disruptions, please place all cell phones electronics to vibrate. You may send your testimony at land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that's land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Chair, we are ready to begin. Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings and Dispositions. I'm joined remotely today by Council Members Koo, Barron, and Schrager. Today we will be voting on LU 688, the 505 West 134th Street Cluster. The subcommittee held a public hearing on this item on October 8th. Today we will also hold a public meeting, a public hearing, on the public sighting of a Department of Sanitation Garage and Salt Shed Facility in Queens. Before we begin, I recognize the subcommittee council to review today's hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Adams. I am Jeffrey Campania, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public who wish to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you wish to testify and have not registered, please go to www.council.nyc.gov to sign up now. If you are a member of the public who wants to watch this hearing, please watch the hearing on the New York City Council website. All people testifying before the subcommittee will be on mute until they are recognized by the chair to testify. When the chair recognizes you, your mic will be unmuted. Please confirm that your mic is unmuted before you begin speaking. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony or written testimony you would like to submit it to the subcommittee to consider, please submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please fill your number or project name in the subject line of the email. During the hearing, council members who would like to ask questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions in the order that they raise their hands. Chair Adams will then recognize members to speak. Witnesses are reminded to remain in the meeting until they are excused by the chair. Council members may have questions. Lastly, there may be extended pauses if we encounter technical problems. We ask that you please be patient as we work through these issues. Chair Adams will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Councillor. We've also been joined by Council Member Acosta Constantinides. We will now vote to approve pre-considered LU 688, the 505 West 134th Street Cluster. This application was submitted by HPD pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law, requesting the approval of an urban development action area project, waiver of the designation requirements of sections 197-C and 197-D of the Charter, and an exemption from real property taxes for three city-owned five-story residential buildings located at 505, 523, and 527 West 134th Street, Borough of Manhattan, together called the 505 West 134th Street Cluster in Council District 7, which is represented by Council Member Levine. This application will facilitate the preservation of 69 units of affordable home ownership. Council, please call the roll. The subcommittee will now vote to approve LU 688. <clears throat> Adams. I vote aye. Ku. I will I. Baron. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Yes, I just want to thank the chair and the staff because I did have several questions when this item was up at our hearing and those questions uh, were answered. And I think this is a great opportunity for people to be able to have home ownership at a reasonable rate. And those who are being challenged will in fact be assisted in getting section eight. So I vote aye on this project. Thank you very much. Traeger. 
I vote aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative with zero in the negative and zero abstentions, the item is approved and recommended for referral to the full land use committee. However, the vote is held open. Okay, thank you, Councillor. We now move on to today's public hearing on LU 691 relating to the DSNY Queen Sanitation Garage 1. This application was submitted by the Department of Sanitation and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services pursuant to Section 197-C of the Charter for the site selection and acquisition of property for a sanitation garage and salt shed facility to be located at 31-1120th Avenue and 19th Avenue in Queens Community District 1 in the Council District represented by Council Member Constantinides. The existing DSNY facility is located in Council Member Van Bramer's district. We are joined or will be joined by both members today. I now recognize Council Member Constantinides to offer an opening statement. Hi, good afternoon, Chair Adams. Thank you so much for the opportunity to address uh, the committee today. And thank you to my colleagues for allowing me to speak as well. I hope everyone's staying safe. Uh, you know, the, the garage on 21st Street has been situated next to public housing for a generation and it has gone on way too long. This is an environmental justice crisis. And the fact that we're able to move this sanitation garage, which has been uh, an EJ contributor for so long, and finally move it to a location that is industrial, that is safe, and that will allow for still community board one to get plowed and and you know, you know have the sanitation services that they need is a big uh, win for our community. However, there are some things that still need to happen. Uh, they're moving the garage to Northern Astoria. Uh, the waterfront there is in desperate need of revitalization. We've had conversations with the administration around the need to finally let Leicester Creek become a living water body again. It's been a brownfield for way too long. There was a visioning session 10 years ago for it to become a kayak launch. Well, right now, if you put a kayak in that, in that particular water body, it would melt. Um, so we would need to make sure that as part of this, that we're on a path to revitalizing Leicester Creek. In addition, um, we've talked to the sanitation department and the administration around upgrades to Northern Astoria where the sanitation garage are going. I recognize the deep financial hardship that the city is going through, but I also recognize that in community benefit agreements, in good times and bad times, are not out of the question. I you know, was a staffer prior to being a council member. I was here for lots of bad budgets where we still were able to do community benefit agreements. There needs to be uh, a revitalization of the, uh, some of the playgrounds, the areas around Northern Astoria to ensure that the community there is getting what they need. Uh, but also looking at 21st Street. And you know, we need Department of Transportation to come through you know, and look at and, and really take a hard look at 21st Street and ensure that 21st Street is you know, reimagined in the manner in which we hoped for so long. This removal of the sanitation garage gives us an opportunity to reimagine the street and also gives us a, an opportunity to reimagine the site in which this garage has stood for the last generations. We need to have public use for public land. This land cannot end up in the hands of developers. This land needs to be affordable housing. This land needs to be something and truly affordable housing truly affordable, not you know, AMIs that are beyond the neighborhood, but really integrated into the community. There's been a robust process that the Community Land Trust, Western Queens, and the Ravenswood Tenants Association, and many residents on 21st Street in and around there have had a robust uh, a, a process already to reimagine this site. We need to continue with that. We need to guarantee this council, we may be term limited out, I know my colleague, I've been working closely with Council Member Van Bramer on this. You know, we may not be council members when this garage gets torn down and something happens there. 
However, we need to ensure the legacy on 21st Street is not one where the city can sell this property in the long term and ends up being a private development. This needs to ensure that we have public land for public use, preferably with a land trust. I look forward to working with HPD on all of these issues to ensure that the new site and the areas around it are giving the love that they need while we reimagine 21st Street and ensure real community participation and a reimagining of 21st Street in and around where this garage has stood. So I thank you again, Chair Adams, for uh, your partnership. I look forward to my continued partnership with the administration on this and with Councilmember Van Bramer as we ensure the legacy here moving forward is not one that we look back on 10 years from now and are ashamed of, but one that we are proud that this garage finally moved away from public housing and that we put something and guaranteed something for our community to have a long lasting impact. Thank you. Thank you very much, council member. So glad you're here today. I now recognize council member Van Bramer to offer remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Adams for uh, the opportunity to speak and thank you to council member Constantinides uh, for all the work that he has been uh, doing and uh, for the exemplary uh, example uh, that uh, he set in working with us to cite a new depot uh, in his district. Uh, I represent the Ravenswood community and have for 11 years, but for decades, the existing 1939 outdated sanitation depot has been a source of real problems for the local community. Uh, it's an environmental justice issue, it's a racial justice issue, and it's a, a public housing justice issue for me. And I know that Carol Wilkins, our president of the Ravenswood uh, Residents Association, and generations before her have fought uh, to, to move this depot and to bring some justice to the local community. For decades, uh, garbage trucks have uh, parked double and triple parked uh, all over the sidewalks and the streets surrounding the Ravenswood houses. Uh, the stench has been uh, uh, awful. Uh, it's been dangerous for the residents and they have been fighting this fight for a long time. Uh, it is certainly not the Department of Sanitation's uh, fault that a depot uh, was built there in 1939, uh, but it has been way past time for the site uh, to be retired. And so it is a great development that a new state-of-the-art facility will be built in Western Queens. It is also a great development that this site will be retired. And as Councilmember Constantinides was just saying, what happens to the site now is of incredible importance. Uh, and I share Councilmember Constantinides' vision that this is public land that must be uh, for public use, that must be for the people of uh, the local community. It cannot be uh, sold to private developers. We cannot have luxury housing. We must see uh, what the community envisions for itself uh, be built one day on this site, even if we are no longer uh, the council members uh, representing this particular portion of our district. So I uh, want to say what a great uh, success story this is, a long time coming for so many people in Ravenswood and Queensview, uh, the borderline of our districts, it runs right uh, through this. And so uh, I just wanted to uh, be here, weigh in and uh, share Councilmember Member Constantinides' Uh, vision for what happens uh, in the future, which I believe uh, follows the community's vision and making certain that uh, this land uh, isn't uh, sold to private developers, uh, that we do not see market uh, rate housing here, that we see public land for public use. Uh, and the people in this community who have suffered for so long uh, are uh, rewarded with their fight, uh, with the site being made uh, into what they want it to be. With that, I thank uh, Councilmember Constantinides and especially the chair for allowing me the opportunity to say a few words. 
Thank you so much, Council Member Van Bramer, for being here. Really, really appreciate the presence of both of you um, to offer your remarks. I concur with both of you and your vision for that location as well. So thank you again for being here. Really, really appreciate that. Council, please call the applicant panel. Mr. Adams, my connection dropped for a second, so I missed the last piece. Nope, you're fine, Jeff. Just need for you to call the applicant panel. Very good. The applicant panel for the Department of Sanitation and DCAS is Gregory Anderson, Steve uh, Bradigam, Arlena Davis, and Jason Ortiz. Okay, if everyone is in council, please administer the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands. Please turn on your video. And please raise your right hands and state your names. Ricky Gregory. Ng. Gregory Anderson. Stephen Brown again. Stephen Brown again. Alana Davis. Jason Ortiz. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions. I do. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you may begin, but I ask that whoever is speaking that you please state your name once again for the record. You may begin. Um, and is there a way we can pull the presentation up as well? Aha. Great. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, Chair Adams. Um, I'm Gregory Anderson, Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs at the Department of Sanitation. Um, also, good afternoon to uh, Councilmember Constantinides, Councilmember Van Bramer, um, and the members of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sighting and Dispositions. Um, I'm joined here today by uh, Steve Brautigam, Assistant Commissioner for Environmental Affairs at the Department of Sanitation, Arlana Davis, Assistant Commissioner for Real Estate, and Ricky Eng, Administrative Architect at DSNY. And we're also joined by Jason Ortiz, Assistant Director for Real Estate Services at DCAS. Um, thank you for your opportunity to testify on the proposed relocation of the department's Queens West One sanitation garage and salt shed to 31-11 uh, 20th Avenue, also known as the Lo Loyster Creek site in Queens Community District 1. Um, at DSNY, our mission is to keep New York City healthy, safe, and clean by collecting, recycling, and disposing of waste, cleaning streets and vacant lots, and clearing snow and ice. And to accomplish this mission, like uh, the department, like the police department and fire departments, relies on a network of district garages embedded in our city's communities. Um, and each of our 59 uh, districts are coterminous with the 59 community districts across the five boroughs. And as we've learned during the COVID-19 pandemic, sanitation services are critical to the health and well-being of our city. Um, the men and women who work at this, at this department are among the most essential workers uh, we have in our city, and we have an obligation to provide them with clean, safe, and appropriate facilities. Um, if you could go to slide two. So uh, DSNY's current uh, District 1 garage, uh, as the council members mentioned, is located at 3428 21st Street in Astoria. It's undersized and structurally deficient. Uh, the garage consists of approximately 37,000 square foot building built in 1931 on a 62,000 square foot lot um, it's much smaller than our average uh, district sanitation garage, which is around 80,000 square feet of combined indoor and outdoor space uh, for personnel and equipment parking. And uh, this facility simply is already overtaxed um, and will not be able to meet 
the needs of a growing community in Western Queens. Uh, to accommodate our operations, we already use a small uh, one acre overflow parking lot located about two miles away, adjacent to the proposed site uh, of the Queens, the new Queens District One Garage. Um, and this project also includes the relocation of a salt lot from the bed of an unbuilt street on 43rd Avenue, uh, west of Vernon Boulevard along the East River. Uh, the current sanitation garage is old, it's outdated and far too small to properly serve our employees and the surrounding community. Um, and previously, the size of the rear yard forced DSNY to park more than a dozen trucks on 21st Street and 35th Avenue. Uh, this was regularly uh, a frustration uh, to surrounding neighbors. Um, it was, you know, something that that we at Sanitation uh, struggled with. And, you know, luckily, we were we were able to eliminate the on street parking several years ago by acquiring the overflow um, parking lot adjacent to Oyster Creek. Um, but there's no guarantee that we will be able to, to continue using that site uh, for the long term. So um, if, we, if we were to lose that auxiliary parking, we would be forced to return those trucks to the streets of this community, uh, which is something that no one wants to see. Uh, next slide. So the current facility, as I mentioned, is in increasingly poor structural condition. Um, these photos illustrate um, some of the structural issues at the garage. I want to assure everyone that we have taken steps uh, to keep the uh, facility safe for our employees. Um, we've added reinforcement to the facade. Um, we've done some additional work, but um, it, these are interim measures that will not suffice in the long term. And a full rehabilitation of the garage would be very costly and would certainly disrupt operations and services to the surrounding community. Um, as we are forced to take additional interim measures uh, to ensure the safety of the facility. It's likely that less and less of the floor area and rear yard will be usable for operations as we have to uh, cordon off space um, where the roof is un unstable, uh, et cetera. And that would firm further limit our flexibility and effectiveness. Uh, next slide. And so I think this, this really illustrates what uh, council members Constantini Constantinidis and uh, Van Bramer mentioned earlier. Um, the garage is currently sited in R5 zone and it's a non-conforming use, obviously. Um, when it opened in 1931, uh, none of these adjacent uses existed. It was uh, in a relatively undeveloped part of, uh, of Astoria. And with the development of Western Queens over the past century, um, particularly the Ravenswood houses in the 1950s, this use has become uh, totally incompatible with the surrounding neighborhood. And uh, today, the garage is surrounded on all four sides by public housing and playgrounds, and is just a block away from the Queensview Co-op uh, in, in Councilmember Constantinides District. And particularly because of the small size, um, cramped quarters, and unenclosed parking area, this facility has been the subject of a number of community complaints regarding safety, noise, air emissions, and odors. And by vacating this property upon the successful completion of the new community or the new Queens Community District One garage, we have the opportunity to pursue a community driven conversation about potential redevelopment for a more appropriate and suitable use on this uh, site. Uh, next slide. So now uh, turning to the proposed project, uh, DSNY and DCAS. Um, seek to acquire approximately 9.8 acres of undeveloped industrial property, as well as easements for vehicular and utility access adjacent to Loyster Creek in the Astoria Industrial Business Zone, um, which is also located in Community District 1. The proposed project area includes Block 826, uh, Lot 42, and part of Block 850, Lot 350, and would facilitate the development of an approximately 94,000 square foot sanitation garage and a 20,000 square foot salt shed. And the proposed site is surrounded on three sides uh, by industrial uses, including the expansive Con Ed facility um, and related uh, energy facilities um, north of 20th Avenue. And the site is ideally suited for a sanitation garage. It is located far away from the nearest residential uses, provides adequate space for on-site parking of all of the equipment that would be uh, dispatched from this location, as well as salt storage. And the project provides uh, DSNY's Queens District One workforce with a proper facility 
uh, of adequate size to store and maintain equipment, provide personnel support space, men's and women's locker rooms, and enable DSNY to continue providing uh, this community district with refuse, recycling, hopefully one day organics collection, um, cleaning, and winter emergency service. Um, so if you could go to the next slide, please. So this is a, a slightly closer view of the, the site plan um, that shows that uh, the north is to the right hand side of this photo um, shows the location of the garage uh, on the far northern side of the parcel um, furthest away from the nearest residential use, which is on the far left side of this um, photograph also shows the uh, entrance driveway coming off of 19th Avenue. Um, there is a, a driveway illustrated here going to 20th Avenue, that's for emergency use only, um, and also for utility easement. Um, so all of, the, all of the access to and from the site would be off of 19th Avenue. That's something that the community has made very clear that there is a priority for them. Um, and we fully intend to, uh, to keep that. Um, next slide. So this just shows another uh, view of the proposed facility, again, showing that it is uh, set back in the far northern part of uh, the property and really shows the surrounding uses very well. Um, to the west, you have uh, a large yard used for Con Ed uh, for storage and um, all sorts of different things. You have energy generation to the east, to the north. Um, you have uh, fossil fuel storage to the north. Um, so really, you know, can't can't think of a better place to put a sanitation garage um, than uh, an industrial neighborhood like this. Next slide. Um, so the proposed garage would incorporate um, state of the art energy efficiency and environmental features, uh, incorporate sustainable design features, including low flow water fixtures, um, recycled materials, and particularly, as you can see in this image, uh, rooftop solar panels that can provide uh, 390 kilowatts of electricity. Um, that would be enough uh, for pretty much all of the facility's lighting needs, um, potentially uh, some other needs as well. Uh, it would feature advanced stormwater collection, storage and treatment system, uh, preventing direct runoff from the site into Loyster Creek. Uh, that's illustrated here by the uh, yellowish uh, oval in the foreground. And really, I think what we're what we're committed to there is, um, you know, by putting another industrial use along this water body, we don't want to contribute to the further deg degradation of the water body, and in fact, actually help clean it up um, and discharge only clean water uh, into the into the creek. Um, and we would uh, pursue at least lead silver accreditation as we're required to, similar to our other uh, recently completed facilities. And if anyone's been to um, the Spring Street Garage, for example, on the on the west side of Manhattan, you, you can really see what a modern sanitation facility looks like. It is uh, so unbelievably different from, from what the 21st Street uh, Garage looks like. Um, you know, green roof, uh, modern uh, facilities for our employees, um, windows, which uh, shockingly, most of our older facilities don't have, um, but it's really important for you know, the, the well-being of our employees to have um, those kinds of uh, accommodations. Uh, next slide. And one, uh, one more actually. Um, so uh, as the site does directly abut uh, Leicester Creek, the proposed site layout, layout and design accommodates the potential for future uh, public waterfront access. Um, at this time, uh, given the city's dire financial situation uh, related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it's not in scope for us to uh, build out this waterfront esplanade as part of this project. Um, however, we plan to uh, design the project to uh, not only accommodate, but also embrace um, that proposed development in the future. Um, we understand the community's desire to improve access to the waterfront. Uh, this is a, a part of uh, Western Queens that um, you know desperately needs access to its waterfront. Um, it, it has been blocked off for far too long by uh, energy generation and, and industrial uses and wastewater treatment plants and airports and um, all other sorts of things. And, and you know, we, 
we firmly are committed to advancing this in the future. Um, and we look forward to working with members of the community with um, some surrounding proposed developments that are in the works um, to really uh, pursue this goal in the future. Um, next slide. So this uh, is an image that shows what the uh, shoreline of Loyster Creek looks like in the vicinity of the proposed garage today. And the next slide shows um, what we'd envision it to look like in the future. So um, a nice uh, walking path, um, vegetation, landscaping, uh, potential for some seating areas, a pavilion, um, you know, a, a definitely a passive space, um, but one where uh, community members really could interact with uh, the waterfront. As Council Member Constantinides mentioned, I think there's there's definitely a need um, to do some uh, some work on the water body itself before we could put in a kayak launch, um, but definitely open to something like that as well in the future. Uh, next slide. So um, just to uh, wrap up here, um, DSNY also conducted a detailed environmental review for this application. Um, we found that the facility will not have any significant adverse traffic, noise, air, or odor impacts. And in fact, we're really proud that we have um, state-of-the-art trucks. Uh, we use ultra-low sulfur um, B20 biodiesel fuel. We have advanced particulate filters, um, emissions controls, and we really have one of the cleanest um, heavy-duty fleets in the country. Um, we're also in the process of testing uh, one of the nation's first fully electric garbage trucks and you know, hope to expand that program um, as those become more cost effective uh, in the future. Um, since we started pursuing the site, um, we've met with, we've met numerous times with local elected officials, community board members, civic leaders, and they've unanimously expressed support for the goal of moving the garage from its current site. And we strongly believe that the proposed site at Loyster Creek is the best place uh, for this garage to move. Um, this new state-of-the-art facility will ensure that we are able to provide efficient, high-quality sanitation services to Community District 1 well into the future. Um, thank you for your consideration today, and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I do have a few questions, but I will defer to my colleagues uh, first, and I do see that Councilmember Constantinides has a question. Thank you, Chair Adams. Can I have more than one? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. It's always good to see you, Chair Adams. Thank you. Um, so I have a few number of questions for sanitation. Uh, but so number one, uh, you see a very theory covered sort of the issues around Leicester Creek. Uh, how long do you think the remediation of the water body would take? Uh, what do you believe? How do you think it'll you know, improve the resiliency of Northern Astoria? Because when you improve a wetland, you also improve resiliency. So what are our thoughts around, you know, resiliency and improving this water body in the long term and how long would that take? Uh, thank you, uh, Council Member, for that question. Um, I think this is the, the, the full-fledged revitalization of this water body is something that definitely needs more uh, investigation, uh, more planning. Um, and I think we'd have to, to bring in our, our partners at the Department of Environmental Protection, the Department of um, uh, the mayor's office of resiliency to really fully answer those. Um, I know there, there is a CSO uh, outfall, for example, at the head of the Creek. Um, and so part of their work to, um, to reduce CSOs citywide, I think would go into um, revitalizing this water body, but we are certainly, um, and I know this is something that we, we talked about uh, when we met a few weeks ago, but we're certainly uh, committed to working with those agencies to, to figure out what the long-term plan could be. And how do, what do we put into language here to ensure that it happens, right? Because again, you know, you'll, you'll be here, Greg, um, and mm -hmm. you've done a great job. I've been a great uh, uh, assistant commissioner for a long time, but you know, I have a colleague, uh, a friend here in Western Queens who said, if it's not ink, it stinks. Uh, Bishop Taylor from Urban Upbound. And yeah, you know, what can we put in ink to ensure that once this mayor you know, moves to you know to the next thing and whatever happens, and I move on to not being a councilor anymore, that this doesn't become an empty promise to the community, but this actually 
is go and become a revitalized water body. And I'm going to harp on this like guarantee language a lot in, in my questions today because I just don't want there to be promises. You know, it's like, I really want to, well, I don't want to say this anymore because after COVID I lost all the weight. Now I want it back. Um, but I can like hope to lose 20 pounds, but you know, unless I'm actually doing something about it, it's just like a nice dream. So how do we make sure these aren't just dreams, but actually like some things that are going to be coming to reality? Yeah, I, I absolutely understand um, where you're coming from there, particularly given, you know, the timing and, um, you know, the, the term elapsing uh, in 13, 14 short months. Um, so, you know, I think those conversations are still are still in the works. There are some things that we've talked about that I think are, are um, much clearer in terms of a firm commitment, something like uh, the long term uh, revitalization of, of Leicester Creek is a little bit more complicated and, and one where really there's a lot of, uh, a lot of overlapping stakeholders. Um, you know, I'm sure that some of the, the impairment to this water body was caused by Con Ed and, and other, you know, industrial uses that can take a long time to sort of work through. So I think what we're, what we're really committed to is, um, is bringing the agencies together, um, potentially bringing private stakeholders together as well, and uh, exploring what that timeline would look like. Um, and you know, for our site in particular, we are planning to do all of the remediation that's necessary. Um, we are planning to restore the shoreline um, and make it um, make it more resilient. It, you know, bring back native plantings, uh, for example, rather than you know these invasive. Uh, weeds that are growing there now. So I think, you know, those are things that we can do uh, very quickly on our time frame. Uh, and then there are there are other things that that, you know, have a longer sort of discussion that's necessary. Now, can you, I mean, so can you go back really quickly to your slide? I know there's this lot 350 that you talked about. If you can put that back up while we're talking, if that's possible. I don't know who maybe, controls that. Or maybe it's not. <laughs> uh, Ryan, could you put the slides back up? I apologize for that. I just want to make sure, as, as I'm talking this through, I want to make sure that we're all sort of seeing the same thing. Yeah, the, the slide with the site plan, is that the one you're looking for? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's, it's the sixth uh, slide, sixth page. Keep going. There you go. Almost. There we go. Okay. So in that lot 350 that adjoined, that's mm -hmm. also going to be used, as you said, you'd be taking part of that lot as well. Uh, so we we would be using uh, the access drive um, and utility easement that are both laid out here. Um, the remainder of that site uh, is not part of this um, proposal, and okay. that's it's uh, it's a privately owned property at this point. Okay, um, so on the property we do have, I do see that there's solar that's gonna be installed on top of the garage, correct? Correct. How much of the garage will it power? So it's 390 uh, kilowatts of solar. Um, it is sufficient for uh, most of the on-site lighting requirements, um, which is the, the biggest component of, of electricity use on-site. Okay. Um, have we thought about installing a battery on this site and, and you know, to facilitate more renewable energy? As we think about the future of Rikers Island and the possibility of renewable Rikers, the opportunities for wind energy to plug into Astoria, the opportunities for you know, creating, you know, right now we create 55% of city's power. Um, if for that, to, you know, we don't want that to continue unless it's renewable power. So is there a possibility here of building battery storage on this site to help facilitate um, the storage and uh, uh, facilitation of renewable energy here in Western Queens? So on the sanitation uh, part of the site, um, yeah. just to be frank, probably not because we've, we have programmed it to try to, to take the smallest footprint necessary for our operations. Okay. Um, I think there's, there's clearly an opportunity on the rest of the site. We'd we'd be happy to live next to a, a battery storage facility or 
Um, I think wind power might be a little complicated by the nearby airport, but. Uh, on well, the I mean, they want to plug in. They'd be out yeah. in the ocean, but they'd want to plug mm. in here, right? Yeah, I, th I think we'd be, we as sanitation would be happy to to think through those possible uses, but it is a private site um, and, and one for which we will not have control. And you know, for the solar, what do we do we envision children from the local community once COVID is over and this thing is built, coming to learn about renewable energy and solar, how this garage works and so on, composting, you know, organics, all that. We sort of facilitate this site as a, as potential for some of the local schools to take a uh, an opportunity to, for them to educate them about what's going on there. Yeah, I, I think you know we have to obviously balance the operational needs of the site with um, with public access. But you know we've been one of the the um, most popular partners for Open House New York, for example, where we every year open up our marine transfer stations, our garages, our central repair shop um, to public access. I think that's the kind of thing that we can certainly pursue on a limited basis. Um, I don't know that we should. That, that we can have um, school-aged kids coming in here, you know, every day, but, um, uh, you know, just to, to sort of... There aren't that many schools in, in there aren't that many schools. Sure. I don't think we, we look at every, but you know, the occasional school trip, I mean, we'd want yeah. them in the classroom learning, you know, when, when, you know, remote learning is over, but we would definitely want the opportunity to have them learn about renewable energy in a safe environment. Of course. Um, and then on 21st street, um, I think we've talked about the reimagining of the street, uh, the you know making it a more traffic safety, you know pedestrian friendly area. I mean we've had the trucks there for generations. I know Councilmember Bremer talked about it since 1951. You know there was the idea of the BQX that uh, is now not as possible, and I think this gives us a real opportunity to reimagine this street, uh, and you know. And we have commitments from DOT, I hope to sort of take a hard look at that, correct? Yeah, I think we still have to finalize the exact language of the commitments, um, but I know that DOT um, is, is open to looking at 21st Street. I know that that's been a priority corridor of, the, corridor of theirs for years. I, as a fellow Western Queens resident, although not your constituent, um, uh, you know, understand that there's a real need there. I've been to that that garage probably a dozen times, and you know it's it is a very busy, very car focused street, and I'm I'm confident we can get to a place with DOT where um, where you're comfortable with what the commitment is. Yeah, because you know the early in my term, I did a study. There were two thousand cars an hour, cars and trucks on that on that road. Um, you know, twenty four hours a day. That's a really sort of staggering average. And you know it shouldn't be uh, dangerous to cross the street in your own community. It shouldn't be dangerous to get milk. Yeah. Um, and then and lastly, looking at our commitments around the affordable housing, I know we've been going back and forth today with language, but I definitely want to make sure, as as Councilmember Bramer talked about, yeah, you know, this needs to be a a site for the community. You know, again, how do we envision an agreement that is is Iron Clay, you know, I hear often we don't want to hamstring the next administration. Yes, I want to hamstring the next administration here and ensure that this cannot be a site for sale, a site that becomes luxury housing, a site that becomes something that 20 years from now we're embarrassed that we were, that we were a part of, but something that leaves a real legacy that the community was heard and that they have the option to get what they need. Now, I don't represent the site, but I can throw a ball across the street and hit it. My 11-year-old, who's a baseball player, can do a better job throwing the ball across the street and hitting it. Uh, but, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, th that we're in tandem here, as Councilman Van Bramer talked about, that this is a guarantee for the community that's going to be public land for public use. Yeah, I, I think, you know, your, your point is uh, very well heard there, and as you mentioned, you know, language is is in the works. Uh, we are optimistic we can get to a place that um, that we're all comfortable with. Um, so, you know, I, I can't speak for HPD themselves, but I know that they're very committed to um, to both 
community process and uh, making some sort of firm commitment uh, in the longer term. I guess the last question I have, uh, and thank you, Chair Adams, for indulging me here. Um, you know, around, in and around the area, you know, there are always community benefit agreements, right? Whenever we move a sanitation garage, you know, there needs to be something, you know, there, there are always things that the community uh, are, you know, are improvements that are made. Yeah, you know, there's a there are several parks in the stone's throw away from this facility that are haven't been renovated since the 1990s, which feels like 10 years ago, but really it's more like 25 years ago. Um, so you know, there you know these these parks are where children play. Uh, they're the same ones they're going to see these these sanitation trucks go through their community. Yeah, you know, we all want to make sure that there's a good neighborhood feel here. How do we, you know, how do we navigate this? I know we're in a very difficult financial situation, but we also need to recognize that you know, the community still needs upgrades in and around the facility to ensure that the community continues to thrive and, and be a place where families want to locate and that, you know, they're, that, it, that it's still an inviting community. And it's not just industrial. So three sides may be industrial, but the other side of 20th Avenue are ball fields and parks and and houses where people live and play and raise their families so how do we ensure that they're you know still getting uh, something that is going to benefit the community in the long term so that's one uh, as as we've discussed before i think the financial situation is a little bit different than where we were when we started this project um, and when we first had conversations about this land use action uh, probably over a year ago. Um, so I think it, it will be a challenge, but I know those conversations are ongoing and I think you you have made your, uh, your demand uh, clear and I think we have to, to keep discussing that going forward. All right, well, I definitely, you know, you know as, as, they, as Yogi Berra once said, it's getting late early. Um, so we, we're running out of time. Uh, we all want to make sure that this, you know, as, as Council Member Weber talked about, you know, and, I, and I talked about earlier, this is an environmental justice issue. This is a racial justice issue. Getting this garage moved is so very important. But getting it right, getting 21st Street right, getting public land for public use, getting the streetscape on 21st Street right, getting the, the resiliency and life for Creek right, getting the surrounding area around the garage right, making sure that they're only entering on 19th Avenue. Yeah, you know, all of these things are gonna make for a better Western Queens community and a community that uh, we all are gonna be thrilled um, to continue to live in for the long term. Um, so I'm looking forward to everyone's continued partnership here to make sure that all these things are put into language that guarantee it. Because it's not just about my term or Councilmember Bramer's term, but it's about what we all leave behind, right? We, we're in these jobs for a very small period of time, and we want to guarantee or to our constituents that we left a legacy that is that we can be proud of, and not one of uncertainty, and one that's a mess. And that's that's where I'm coming from. That my constituents know that we left behind something that's that's fair and equitable, and that benefit the community in the long term. Okay. Thank you, council member. Um, thank, you. I'm, thank you very much. I'm going to note at this time that we've been joined by council member Miller and we will now go over to council member Van Bramer for his questions. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, I wanna say uh, to um, Mr. Anderson and all of those folks uh, and to the chair and, and council member Constantinides, that this is a, a remarkably complicated uh, uh, move in the sense that we are um, decommissioning a sanitation depot and salt lot uh, on the uh, edge of my district uh, uh, into uh, uh, phasing into a brand new state of the art uh, facility in council member Constantinides' district. Um, but I, I wanna just go back because you know, I really believe it was the people, uh, the leadership and the community at the Ravenswood Houses that drove uh, this issue at, into the forefront 
of, of the public consciousness and, uh, and encourage this administration to take very seriously the environmental concerns and the negative impacts that the existing depot was having on the Ravenswood houses. And, uh, and I have to give credit where credit is due uh, because Carol Wilkins, who's the president of our Ravenswood uh, Houses Association, uh, several years ago, there was a big snowstorm, a uh, blizzard and Mayor de Blasio came to the Ravenswood houses uh, to uh, check on the snow removal. Uh, and uh, Carol and I met him in uh, 20 inches of snow. Um, and we took a look at the snow uh, removal, but then Carol Wilkins uh, pulled the mayor over and said, I want you to see the sanitation depot. And I want you to see the garbage trucks that are parked in the street. And while this is during a blizzard, I want you to know that when it's summertime and all of the children in our community are in the ball fields, the basketball court and the park uh, that surrounds the sanitation depot. They are breathing in uh, the uh, stench and the fumes uh, from the garbage trucks while trying to cross the street uh, through double and triple parked garbage uh, trucks. So uh, all credit to the Ravenswood community for fighting for decades and never giving up on this particular issue and credit to the administration for taking it seriously, uh, and, uh, and to my colleague, Council Member Constantinides, uh, uh, for stepping up. And when uh, they found a site uh, in his district, uh, he made uh, the administration make uh, and create the best, uh, most sustainable, and most beautiful uh, depot and salt lot that they could ever create. Um, I do want to go back to, uh, because it's uh, in my district, the disposition of uh, the existing uh, uh, depot. And I know that there are discussions with DOT and HPD, um, but uh, uh, I too am concerned that uh, we haven't seen the details uh, of those uh, promises. And again, I agree with Councilmember Constantinis that we need more than promises. So um, this is partly a question to Greg Anderson, but also to DCAS, who I believe is here represented on the process uh, of decommissioning the site. Obviously there will be some years where the new facility will need to be constructed. Uh, and then the, uh, the new facility will be constructed and our existing site will be uh, torn down. Uh, but uh, first to, to Greg, if you can uh, share some more information on on uh, the, the promises and uh, the documents that are going back and forth on, on what's being promised. And second, if DCAS could talk, could talk a little bit about the, the process of decommissioning the site and, and, and how DCAS will handle that ultimate disposition of the 21st Street site. And then also the salt lot uh, uh, off of Vernon, uh, that is part uh, that is being used today. What will be the, the disposition of that uh, since you're using that as a, a part of the existing situation, but assume that will fold into uh, the new facility, uh, Leicester Creek. So what becomes of the salt lot? Sure, uh, thank you, council member. Um, so as far as the, the existing garage site, um, I know there actually has already been a uh, community-driven, very grassroots uh, visioning effort for that site. Um, we've uh, been a part of it. We attended the last meeting uh, that they had on site, literally outside the garage. Uh, I was there. Across the street. Um, yep. uh, Nick from our office was there. You know Nick well. Um, I saw him. <clears throat> um, HPD also attended that. Um, you know, we're very committed to uh, to to being a part of that process. Obviously don't want to hijack the process in any way, but very committed to being part of it. And you know, the, the language that, um, that I think uh, the mayor's office has been working on with HPD, I think um, at least is a, a, a good first effort at trying to, to get to um, you know, what you and, and council member Constantinides are looking for in terms of a real commitment to um, to this site and particularly to uh, the development of affordable housing on the site, truly affordable housing. Um, 
so I don't, I, I know because HPD is also involved in that conversation, I don't want to speak for them uh, and their, um, their sort of process, but I know that that's something that we're very committed to um, having a thorough conversation on with both uh, you and, and with council member Constantinides over the coming days and, you know, hopefully not more than a week or so. Um, because it's, it, we know that it is a, it is a linchpin uh, issue uh, for this project. Um, and as far as the, uh, before I hand it over to um, Jason from DCAS, um, the existing salt lot is actually in the mapped but unbuilt uh, roadbed of 43rd Avenue, uh, west of Vernon Boulevard, uh, adjacent to the East River, just north of the Con Ed uh, Training Center. Um, you're familiar with it. Um, also, uh, just south of the proposed uh, Silver Cup West development. Um, I'm not an expert on that one, just a local resident that happens to read about it in the, <laughs> in the blogs. But um, I know there, there are some, some factors there. And Arlana, I don't know if you want to jump in um, with that site. But um, our intention would be to uh, relinquish that um, mapped but unbuilt street uh, upon the, uh, the completion of this salt shed. So, so ah, there she is. Uh, uh, Solana, um, basically when sanitation vacates a site such as Vernon Boulevard and the Q1 garage, we would relinquish the site to DCAS for further disposition. What we've done uh, in the case of Manhattan, we formulated a task force with representatives from the community and um, sanitation and any stakeholders to discuss what the potential for that site could be and um, recommendations are forwarded to DCAS and a determination can be made by all the stakeholders as to the best use of the site. In particular with Vernon Boulevard, we'll definitely relinquish that site. And DOT and I believe DEP have some uh, potential plans for the site. Can you just please, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, can you just state your name and your affiliation for the record? I'm sorry, Alana Davis, Assistant Commissioner of Real Estate at the Department of Sanitation. Thank you. So uh, just to go back in, I know um, uh, Greg knows uh, this being uh, a Long Island City resident and, and I would say off all those blogs, uh, Mr. Anderson, um, but, uh, I can't uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I just want to hone in a little bit on the, the salt lot, because as, as, uh, as Greg well knows, that is one of the most valuable pieces of land, uh, in, in New York city. It is, uh, right there on, uh, the waterfront and, so uh, uh, I believe I just heard that DEP and DOT may have an interest in that site, um, but uh, you know I would have great concern about that site going to a private uh, developer. And uh, I mean, my goodness, it's worth uh, you know tens of millions of dollars, uh, if not uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, given where it's situated. And as you referenced, Greg, uh, the Silver Cup West project, uh, which has been long contemplated, but not uh, actually uh, implemented. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, there is the ability, uh, even without a land use action, uh, to, to build incredibly large uh, towers there. So, uh, when we say that DEP and DOT have an interest and DCAS will ultimately dispose of that site, can someone share a little bit more insight as to 
what that's going to look like, what that process is going to be. I know there's some, there was some reference to community input, but uh, to my knowledge, there really hasn't been any discussion about that particular site with, with the community, community board, elected officials. So for that site in particular, I know um, from my past history uh, at DEP that there is a substantial um, uh, regulator under there, um, which is part of our, our sewer system and, and the interceptor sewers, um, as well as the CSO outfall. So I don't know that there's really um, much development potential for the site because there, there is this um, ongoing DEP interest in obviously maintaining and protecting their infrastructure. Um, I think this is, this is something we can certainly um, get more information on uh, from our fellow agencies and, and come back to you with um, council member. Um, but I, I don't think that at this point that the city intends in any way, shape or form uh, to um, pursue development um, right now. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing contemplated. There's nothing on the table. Um, so I think we, you know, if this is a, a something that you want resolution on um, in the coming weeks before this action moves forward, we're happy to, um, to explore that further. Yeah, I appreciate all of that and, and um, uh, your knowledge of, of what's underneath that land. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I would appreciate some, some, some clarification on it just because as you know, a, a billionaire who wanted to, let's say, have an interest in that area and develop that land, um, someone with incredible resources might be able to uh, uh, spend some money and, and get around some of those uh, 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 below ground issues that you spoke of, uh, if it meant uh, that in the end they were able to uh, uh, build substantial luxury housing and, and 70 story towers uh, which you know is is potentially contemplated just a, a few feet to the north, as you mentioned in Silver Cup West. Uh, so would want to uh, be sure um, that that's not not only in this administration's plans, uh, because obviously uh, the mayor uh, also has 13 or 14 months uh, uh, left. That uh, a future administration uh, would be. Uh, bound by whatever agreements are going to be made here. Um, and, uh, and, and once again, I know that because I was at that uh, last visioning session at Ravenswood um, and uh, the Western Queens Community Land Trust uh, helped uh, um, run the, uh, the meeting. And I know uh, all the agencies were there to hear. But again, I just want to say that the Ravenswood community, and I know you know this, uh, Greg, but the Ravenswood community has borne the brunt of this uh, for decades. Um, and it is very much an issue of racial justice. In my first year as a council member, uh, I sponsored a basketball tournament uh, in the basketball courts uh, that are right next to the garbage depot, went out. We were so proud of that event and all the kids got jerseys and we were playing basketball, but it was a warm summer day uh, and uh, as all of these beautiful children were playing basketball, um, as a brand new council member, uh, the, the stench from the depot um, filled the basketball courts. Um, and, and I thought, how, how are we doing this, right? How can we do this? Um, uh, uh, and, uh, and so whatever agreements get made here, they have to center um, the Ravenswood community, right? Uh, the black and brown uh, people who have um, lived with this uh, for the last uh, 50, 60 years um, and, and who fought, right? That's why I believe all of this is being done. It's why all of us are here today is because uh, the people of Ravenswood uh, kept at it, kept fighting, Carol Wilkins dragged the mayor uh, over to the depot in a blizzard. Yes, uh, former Commissioner Garcia uh, uh, obviously was there multiple times with me as well. But, um, you know, I, I'm very interested in the final language because uh, the people of Ravenswood have got to be centered. Uh, and justice for the people of Ravenswood has got to be centered in any agreement. Moving uh, this depot is already uh, a very substantial victory for the people of Ravenswood. And uh, uh, 
justice being delivered. But in this agreement and the future disposition of the 21st Street site um, is where the real justice will occur. Do you want to add anything Thank to you. that, Greg? <laughs> no, I, I think I think you you've your point is well made, and I think we you know we will take that um, that spirit back to to the conversations that we have with our sister agencies, with you, with Councilmember Constantinides, um, with <clears throat> you know others at the City Council. So I think very very much heard, and um, you know we certainly I know I know um, speaking for. Uh, former Commissioner Garcia, at least I can't speak for the mayor, but um, I know that she certainly from conversations with um, Ravenswood tenants, with conversations with you, with Assemblymember Nolan, um, with, you know, so many other um, local community members that this was a project that had to happen, um, or at least moving the garage from that site had to happen. And, um, you know, we're, uh, I, I think we all would have liked to have um, been at this point in the process a little bit sooner than we are now. Um, but you know that's unfortunately the reality of of land use and and acquiring private land um, as a government agency. But you know we desperately want this to move forward, and we acknowledge and appreciate and really commend the Ravenswood residents and and the community activists for fighting for um, for this kind of justice. So. Thank you. I know you're a constituent of mine as well. So uh, thank you for uh, choosing uh, the greatest council district in New York as your home. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair uh, Adams, for uh, giving uh, me the opportunity uh, to speak and ask these questions. And of course, uh, I know that you too uh, uh, care and love for the people of Ravenswood uh, as well and uh, bringing justice uh, to these uh, very, very good folks. Thank you. Thank you so much, council member. Your testimony is always very compelling. So thank you so much. Um, I just have one question before we go on to see if any other council members have questions. Is this project still expected to be completed uh, by 2023? So right now the, the construction funding is in fiscal year 2023. So that's when we anticipate um, the project would start. Uh, that uh, was true before uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And so obviously this land use process has been delayed about six months because of that. Um, I think it's possible that the construction could slip um, a year or so from that time frame. Um, we also do still have to finalize the acquisition uh, with the private landlord. So that's um, something that still has to be um, finished before we can start the design and construction process. But, um, you know, it is, it is a few years away at, at minimum. Okay, and, and when is the current uh, site expected to close? Uh, so on that time frame, um, if we started construction in 20, realistically calendar 24, um, it's usually around two years to build a sanitation garage. Uh, so sometime around calendar year 26. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, council, are there any uh, other council member questions? Councilmember Miller has a question. However, I would recommend at this time we also Good afternoon, uh, Chair Adams. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, so, uh, Councilmember Miller, before you ask your question, we're going to, uh, our vote is still open. We'd like to do that first. I think that you're the, uh, the little wolf for uh, pre-considered LU 688. The vote's still open. So I'm gonna hand it back over to council. Then we're gonna take your question. Okay. LU 688, 505 West 134th Street. Councilmember Miller, how do you vote? Vote aye. Five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, with zero abstentions. And the item is recommended for full approval to the full use committee. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilmember Miller, you may proceed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair Adams. Uh, so I do have a, 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 just a few questions. Um, about the upgrade uh, and, and the new facility, the, the SMY facility, which is uh, obviously sorely needed. I know what it is to have uh, uh, 
antiquated facilities that that don't provide adequate service or a service that really meets the needs and the capacities of the new and emergency communities we have that in, in the Jamaica area. Um, even more importantly, how we manage sanitation waste transfer has been a major issue in in uh, in the Jamaica area as well. So I have a few questions along that line. Um, but I first want to say on behalf of, of myself, my family um, that have resided in, in the Ravenswood houses for more than 40 years um, and had experienced uh, 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 the neighbor, not the, the not so friendly neighbor uh, to no fault of their own um, of DSMY that they certainly deserve more. Um, and I have heard my colleagues kind of articulate the woes and, and having seen those and having honestly um, used that facility as a playground. Um, uh, those are the kind of things that, that happen in, in, in these communities. And so we do certainly deserve better. But as we transition out, I would hope that any new project comes that really, um, that they really uh, 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 benefit the the Ravenswood and surrounding community more than anything, uh, whether it be affordable housing or whether it be a green space that really supports um, the community uh, we've seen now, particularly during COVID, how important uh, it is to have outdoor space and, and certainly they are deserving of it. Um, so uh, as far as um, the purchase of the land, is this an outright purchase or is this a 99 year lease or whatever? So right now it's contemplated as a lease. Um, we've uh, begun lease negotiations with the, uh, the landlord. Um, so we're, as soon as this land use action is completed, we plan to hopefully finalize those um, expeditiously and um, move forward. Uh, are there any plans in the work for the current uh, property, the, the current location? And uh, from, from a DCAS, DSNY, and then a, a community perspective, what, what are we seeing or hearing? So um, from the DSNY perspective, um, and I can speak a bit from the perspective of some of our sister agencies as well, um, as we discussed uh, very much with council members Constantinides and Van Bramer before. Um, sanitation will vacate the property. We have no um, ongoing interest there. Um, as soon as we get our new garage, um, we no longer have use for it. Um, we will um, transfer uh, responsibility back to DCAS. Um, and one of the, the ongoing conversations that we're having with um, the two local members is uh, really putting in place a, a strong community engagement process um, to really um, identify the, the future use for this property. There's been a lot of interest expressed in affordable housing, um, very deeply affordable housing, um, potentially uh, senior affordable housing on this property. That's something that, that I know council members, the council members have expressed as desperately needed in Western Queens. So I think we, we want to um, participate in that process, facilitate it, and let that drive uh, the future use of this uh, site. So is, is there, is, is that part of, do you kind of have a, a universal process in, in um, obtaining, whether how you obtain implementation, uh, uh, environmental and, and, and access uh, around properties. I, I say that to say is, I, I know that you, there's been a number of new facilities um, and, and each community, each neighborhood is, is different, um, but certainly there are universal standards, right? That, that DSNY has, um, uh, as, it, as it relates to environment, but also um, in terms of, 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 of usage, future usage. Um, I've seen uh, garages that have closed a decade ago that pretty much are not occupied to this day. Um, uh, 
we, we would hate to see that. Also, um, from, from a Jamaica standpoint, uh, one would expect that DSNY would be uh, the standard for, um, for sanitation, uh, waste removal, um, and if so, um, what are we expected to see that is kind of state of the art, something out of the norm? Is it going to be green? Is it going to be completely enclosed? What about the older mitigations and all these things that we all can learn from that then becomes the standard? Uh, we have a, a private waste transfer that sits across the street from a 15 acre park you know, that is utilized each and every day. And, and, and uh, um, you know, while we struggle as a community uh, with that, uh, we would hope that the city is leading in standards and it's something that we can potentially adopt. Um, I know also that Costa, uh, Council Member Costa Tanides, uh, was concerned about access uh, for, for our young people in the educational component, which on the private side, um, they've already agreed to uh, such an educational component that we see uh, in communities that were formerly impacted in a very negative way by having these waste transfer facilities or sanitation garages to be able to see how we transform garbage and, 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 and really into uh, uh, sustainable usages. And that is something should be shared. Um, and, and I'd love to, to, to figure out how uh, communities can, it, it could be um, more, the communities can become, particularly our young people can be more involved in this, this, this process, um, particularly as we talk about sustainability. But really, I, I just wanted to talk about uh, the standards. Um, and and, I, and I, I did watch, uh, the, the PowerPoint, but just the highlight of what you're doing differently from what we may currently see in, uh, in facilities um, that may be a decade old, what, what, what is uh, kind of next level um, uh, resources that are being utilized that we may not be familiar with and um, that would speak to and highlight um, safety uh, and sustainability. Of course, um, thank you, Council Member. And I think the, the first point I'd make is, um, and I know that we've uh, had many, many conversations about the private facilities in your district um, and in Jamaica. And you know, this the the notable difference for this facility here is that it is it is only a garage; it is not a transfer station. So, um, you know, it's it's a very different use. You don't have any you know, exposed piles of waste or um, transferring waste from one truck to another. Um, if a truck comes back to this facility full, it's an incidental uh, thing. It's not, you know, it's not a regular basis. Our, our goal is for the sanitation workers to do their route, um, go to the, the transfer station that serves this community, which is down in Long Island City, uh, dump the truck and come back empty. They, they wash it out. Um, on a very regular basis. So the goal is for this to be a very different facility than the ones that you're used to in the in the Jamaica community. Um, as far as uh, you know, our own environmental analysis, um, and we have uh, Assistant Commissioner Steve Bradigan here, who's our um, our legal expert and an environmental review expert. Um, you know, I would say that sanitation, probably because of our uh, our history with litigation probably has one of the most conservative approaches to environmental review of any agency in the city. Um, we take it very seriously and do a very thorough job looking at the, um, the, the transportation impacts, the air impacts, the noise impacts, um, many other factors, resiliency, um, flood impacts, those sorts of things um, as part of the environmental review process. Um, so we've done a comprehensive um, assessment of this uh, this and identified that there are no significant uh, negative impacts. Um, and, you know, to this facility in particular, um, it is a little bit different from the, the new Manhattan garages in that it is more of a campus style development than a building. 
Um, so it, you know, it's, it is a bit bigger, but this is Queens that we have the luxury of slightly more space. We don't have to build uh, a structure where trucks are driving on different floors, which is uh, incredibly expensive and uh, difficult to design. Um, so it, it, but it does have um, very ambitious sustainability measures uh, included. I think that the most notable ones are the uh, on-site solar um, on the roof of the building, um, 300 kil 390 kilowatts of solar panels, um, as well as a really comprehensive stormwater collection and uh, treatment system um, to really make sure that, uh, that you know, we're not discharging any sort of polluted stormwater or, or uh, anything of that sort into uh, the adjacent water body. So those are, those are two things that I think are, um, if not first of their kind uh, for sanitation garages are um, certainly uh, at the state of the art. And um, those are things that, you know, we would love to include in all of our projects um, going forward. There are lots of considerations at play. Um, I think, uh, you know, we would love to be building more sanitation garages. We have a number of facilities that are probably in a similar state as the Queens One garage in terms of being undersized and, and very old and um, structurally uh, problematic. Um, but we don't get the opportunity to come before this committee very often. So, um, you know, when we do, obviously we want to put our best project forward and that's what we feel like we did here. And, and, and finally, is um, will all the uh, trucks be housed indoor? Um, at this facility, they will not. Um, there is outdoor, an outdoor parking lot uh, on site, but it is also, um, you know, very far away from the nearest residential use. Um, I don't know the exact uh, distance, but it's you know probably at least a thousand feet uh, the parking lot from the nearest residential use. And Steve's shaking his head, so I'm I'm in the ballpark. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's you know it's not it's not like they'll be parked next to people's homes um, as they are in some of our other garages, uh, unfortunately. So yeah. Okay. Thank you so and, much. And, and one more point I would make, um, I know everyone loves the idea of enclosed sanitation garages. Um, one of the biggest challenges we have with our facilities is we end up having to use them for a very long time. And the bigger the roof you build, the more expensive it is down the road. So, you know, in, in some places um, where it's very close to other uses, very important to have fully enclosed in other places where we have a little bit more space and can have a buffer with the surrounding uses, um, outdoor parking is um, is the right way to go from a long-term perspective. Okay, thank you. So uh, with uh, confirmation from council, if I can get it, that, they, that there are no more uh, council member questions. I see no other council member questions. Okay, seeing no further questions, this panel is excused. Thank you very, very much for your testimony and your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Council, are there any members of the public wishing to testify? I see two members of the public here to testify on LU 691, Avi Gross and Tio Chino. Please admit the witnesses to the meeting. Members of the public will be given two minutes to speak. Please do not begin until the arms is announced that time has started. Okay, I now recognize Avi Gross. Please wait for the time. Starting time. You may begin. Hi, Chair Adams, how are you? Uh, thank you for having me. First, I just wanna commend uh, you and all the council members for asking all of these questions, which I think are really important. Um, I sometimes humbly get the feeling that um, public property is given to developers without a thorough inquiry as to exactly what's happening and whether or not this serves the public. So thank you for that. Um, I specifically, want to raise um, with you some concerns. Um, I, I don't know if 
you or the council members had a chance to look at the um, the different agreements, uh, the history of this property, who owned it, but there are some legitimate concerns here. Just from what I could see, this was owned by Con Edison, um, who, which is a public entity to some extent, and it decided it didn't need it anymore, so it sold it for $15 million to a company called Leicester Creek LLC. And the alarm bells start when it sold for $15 million, but then very shortly afterwards, Leicester Creek takes out um, a mortgage for $20 million, Chair Adams, and then another mortgage to a, a yet a third party for $5 million. And then finally, a mortgage to Signature Bank, a fourth party for $10 million and $20 million. Now this is public property, so I don't, I can't say for sure that this is nefarious, but the fact that you have a public entity selling to an LLC um, for an X amount of money, and then suddenly this profit, this property is being used um, to flip it for profit to multiple other properties, it is concerning. And if I may, I could just, you know, Leicester Creek LLC. Time expired. Can I just complete this point? Please. Can I complete this point? Chair Adams? You're on mute. I can't. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, you may complete your point. Thank oh, you. thank you so much. So my my other uh, concern that I want to share with you is that Leicester Creek LLC and then the Gallon Fund LLC, um, some of them have information online. You could understand who's running them, but some of them are purposefully very stealthy. And we don't know who's in these LLCs. We don't know what kind of conflicts of interest we might have. And I'm going to complete my point, Chair Ams. I'm not, you know, I don't want, when I come on to give a testimony, I don't want you to, to grimace and be like, oh, wow, here's that annoying guy. I humbly think, you know, this is a voice that should concern council members. We really need, uh, we need to make sure that these public properties are carefully vetted, that there are no conflicts of interest, and that the public interest is best served. I know you are a person of integrity, Chair Adams, and I thank you for your time and please continue protecting the public. I never grimace when you testify, Mr. Gross, and I thank you for being here and I thank you for your dedication. Thank you so much. Okay, I now recognize uh, Theo Chino. Please wait for the time. Starting time. Thank you, Chairman Adam. Uh, same thing as Mr. Gross, We've been, I've been hearing the project and I still hear the same people. HPD, UHAB, and other people involved in this project of, uh, of solar and things like that. As we have testified previously, and it seems like nobody hears us, they listen, but they don't hear us. UHAB, it's a criminal entity that should not exist the same way ACORN disappeared back in the years. You just took a vote as an example right now. You just took a vote about the cluster on 135th Street given to LHS uh, management. And uh, LHS management basically owns the building of that old woman behind me. She lives at 772 2nd uh, Avenue. And you can see the building is very small. And HLS wants to evict her through the court system so many times that they're in court for so long they're trying to salvage their building. That's what HLS management is doing. And you just voted five seconds ago without asking a single question about how HLS is. And I know my time is going to expire, but I don't know what to do anymore. I can come, say the word, tell you how they are bad entity and things like that. And you don't ask me. You blocked me on Twitter, Sir Adam. You don't want to hear anything I'm saying. And this is concerning on how future projects like this project of, of, of DCAS. I lived here in Manhattan where we dealt with that thing. We dealt with the stench. I grew up with the stench of the, of the Riverside Park behind me. So I feel what you're saying about Woodhaven Tenant, but are you going to start asking the right question? You are going to be term limited for most of you and suddenly the project will move on and only us will remember. We need your help. We need 
Time expired. We need your help. On the 19th of this month, we want to do a thing on Times Square to call out the corruption. And we hope that you and all your colleagues will come and join us to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Council, are there any more members of the public wishing to testify? You have to unmute. Chair Adams, I see no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Okay. Were there any questions for either witness at this point? from my colleagues. Okay. I see no questions. I see so no questions. witnesses are now excused. Council, are there any further members of the public wishing to testify at this time? There are no other members of the public here to testify. There being no other members of the public who wish to testify, the public hearing on LU 691 for application number 200238-PCQ. The DSNY Queen Sanitation Garage is now closed and the item is laid over. That concludes today's business. I remind you that if you have written testimony on today's item, you may submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or the project name in the subject hearing. I'd like to thank the applicants members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, land use staff, and the Sergeants at Arms for participating in today's hearings.